Hi guys, welcome back to Sparky Face 5. Today is a special requested video as I was recently showing off on Twitter that I made this design and when I was doing it I realized the tops were actually a different dimension to the bottom of these walls and the little sticky outy bits. Very technical term that, sticky outy bit. And so I had to learn how to use a function called loft in Fusion 360. Katya on Twitter has requested that I introduce her to this function, so that's what we're doing today. Let's get started. Wait, 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 wait. I have a new format that I'm starting. I want to do a very special thanks to my Patreons who are supporting me. Uh, it means the world to me. It helps me keep going and buy filaments and all of that sort of stuff. Fun stuff ahead. So what I'm going to start doing is shouting out my patrons three or four at a time until we get to the end of the list and then new patrons will be shout out as soon as they arrive. First off, let me thank Helen and David, Tyler Morgan and Mike from NLTMW. And I believe that's never let the machines win. Let's get started for real this time. Alright, so today we're making stamps, you know, that you plunge into paint and you stick on a paper, you get different shapes. I'm just going to quickly fly through how I did the handles for these. And uh, all I did was I made a big circle that was 40 millimeters in diameter, a smaller circle in the middle that was 15 millimeters in diameter, and extruded those shapes both upwards as far as I thought was reasonable for a stamp handle. I then proceeded to fillet the joint between the two shapes just to give it a smoother transition and flip the whole thing upside down because I prefer to work on the top surface rather than the bottom. After flipping the handle upside down, I then just copy and pasted until I had four of them so that I could make four different shapes on my stamps. Next, I went to the construction menu, selected offset plane and moved the plane offset five millimeters from the top of the stamp. This gives us a new work surface to start drawing new shapes onto with the sketch tool. I drew 40 millimeter circles around uh, based on the center of the plane below it just so I knew where my hard edges were and then I proceeded to make shapes in all of the circles and these will become the, st the stamp shapes. So the shapes that I chose to transition from a circle were the square, triangle, I then used the spline tool to make a bit of a random shape and the very last one I'm going to keep as a secret to the very end. Now for the real magic. From the create menu we select loft and then we select both surfaces that we want to transition. So here we go transition from the circle to the square plane and then we do it repeat for the triangle, for the silly shape and for the one that's on the end. So here you can see that the loft function is quite good. What it can do is it can change one shape into another shape over a distance as smooth as possible. So from here what I did was select the component which is the very very top of the menu and export it as an STL and then I took it into Simplify 3D. Once I was there I had to separate them into separate files because my printer is very small at the moment and face them downwards for ease of printing and off we go. And here in the print preview you can see just how well it's transitioning from whatever shape is down the bottom back to the circle over that distance. So I printed out the stamps and this is what I did with them. Uh, just a quick and, <laughs> quick and nasty paint job on my brand new printer. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks again to all my Patreon supporters. It really helps me out a lot. Um, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so that you can keep up to date whenever I release a video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.